I'm gonna be putting the GoPro Hero 11 Black in the DJI O3 Air unit to the test in a blind image comparison. I was surprised by the results and I don't think you'll be able to tell which one is which. First clip we're gonna start with is a heads up just so you can see how they both perform in low light. It's about eight o'clock at night and the sun has just set. And we've got the final bits of light. This is a really cool car park and I ended up doing some racing with the DJI O3 system a little later on. Now, what we can see here is just how close this image contest is. If you were to adjust the settings in camera B and potentially do something with brightness, you could bring that image up and you could probably do some things in post to make that image look as bright as A. There's also probably some in-camera settings that you could adjust as well. Image A is just that a lot brighter, but the thing with the brightness, and this is where we see the camera's ISO trying to adjust. Now, it is brighter because the camera has bumped up the ISO. And what we can see is with that ISO increase to get that brightness, we're actually starting to get a lot more noise. Whereas in camera B, there's actually less noise in that image, even though it's darker, which makes it a really interesting shot. Now, I've gone to camera A and done some slight color correction, and I'm horrible at color grading, but you can see that that actually looks a lot better while, while it's on camera B now, We've actually got that noise. I'm going to run you through my setup as well as a few of the other tests that we're going to be doing throughout the video. First, let's start with my drone. I'm going to be flying the Flyfish RC Voltador DC6. Now this is a 6 inch drone which means I've got propellers that have a diameter of 6 inch. And this is absolutely huge. I had a lot of fun flying it throughout these different tests and I didn't realize just how big this is. The quad has what is known as dead cat geometry. What this achieves is that with the wide field of view at the DJI camera is there won't be any props in the shot, which makes it great for cinematography and filming. As for the GoPro, I'm gonna be running my GoPro Hero 11 Black. I love this camera and I took it with me to the Maldives recently and it was phenomenal and took beautiful images. Now in terms of the settings for the car park video you just saw and the clip you're about to see, I've set both these cameras up at 4K 60 frames per second. ISO is set to auto, but I've locked the shutter speed at 1 over 120, which is double our frame rate. And I've set the white balance on both to 55. Okay, so I've got K. my GoPro on my Flyfish RC Volador DC6. We're outside at the park. It is a beautiful Australian day. Now it's time to just plug it in and fly to see which one has the better image quality. Let's see if you can tell. So this was absolutely blown out. Now obviously this is not the ideal scenario and what I really wanted to test here was just how low the ISO can adjust if it was going to do any exposure compensation but also to see if the aperture was variable on either camera which in a sense it should close the aperture down in order to pr compensate for such a blown out image. Now you wouldn't want to be flying with such a blown out image. Ideally what you'd want to do to keep that shutter speed the same is you'd want to put an ND filter on your camera. There are ND filters available for the DJI O3 system and the GoPro. And what that's going to do is reduce your exposure so you're not going to have this blown out imagery. So now I'm going to set both cameras to auto and let them decide how we're going to get the best image. And now we can see after setting the shutter speed to auto, the cameras are doing everything in their power to produce a great image. And it was an absolute beautiful day. Just look at that sun. Trying to fly in and out of the shadows to be able to just see how well it's going to adjust to bright, to a bit dark. Now we go to camera A in full screen. It's really good detail reproduction. It is a really vibrant image. There's good balance between the green of the grass and the blue of the sky. And how beautiful is that blue sky? Uh, you, there's good detail in that grass as well, so you can see uh, all the scraggle. And we're now going to head into camera B on full screen. And again, you've got some really good color reproduction, really good detail in the grass. Uh, that blue sky does look 
does look really blue as well. It's handling going in and out of the shadows really, really effectively. While I change packs, what about our under 250 gram quads like my Umagod 250 here or our guarded Cinewoops like the Foxwoop 25? The naked GoPro or Insta360 Go is not really the best solution, but is running with DJI 03 actually better? Now this is my Umagod 230. It's the four inch version with three and a half inch props. Never disarm. And I've put a LUT on it just to try and disguise that color reproduction a little bit. So you can't potentially tell from some of the previous images which one was DJI and which one was GoPro. I have soft mounted with 48 kilohertz PWM frequency on the ESC, but there's still some of those, those jitters and it turned out that the lens um, needed to be adjusted. So there's a video at the end uh, to consider watching, but I was really enjoying it. And then this is after I've applied that fix to the lens down in the car park, there's less jitters, but Again, this is a very, very dark situation. My car park underneath my building is super dark. And with that darkness, you can really see a lot of that noise start to come through in the image as well. But I've also played with the color slightly. So I've just um, neutralized it because I still had color set at 5,500. Before I go back to the DJI versus GoPro, I want to let you in on something. Now, all these transition scenes, the audio is actually being recorded wirelessly by my Sony camera. And the video that you're seeing is being recorded by either the GoPro or by the DJI O3 system. Did you even notice? And can you actually tell the difference? Now for the next set of images, I'm gonna make it even harder. I'm not gonna give you A and B, and you're just gonna to have to decide for yourself which is best, as well as which one is which. Let's go. And we're going in the shadows again. We can see a lot of the fine detail, which is really what we want in our video recording and going into the brightness to see if we can just put the camera under pressure to just not actually reproduce the image as well. But you know, that, gr that green is really beautiful in that pocket. It's really luscious. We're switching over and you know, the colors here in, in this particular pack, um, yeah, it's, uh, I think they're not as vibrant as, as the previous shot. So, I mean, they're still beautiful, still great color reproduction. And like, look at that and the concrete. And now we've got a heads up shot. You can see on the left, it's a lot whiter. For both being on 5500K, I'd expect the white balance to be, you know, near on the same, but you can just see how different it is. The GoPro has a trick up its sleeve. You see, the GoPro can record a 5.3K image at an eight by seven aspect radio. Now, what I've done is I've just shrunk that down to fit in the 4K 16 by nine aspect ratio that this YouTube video is playing at. But what that recording allows you to do is do some post-processing in the GoPro player, which has inbuilt Real Steady Go. Although to be able to unlock Real Steady Go, there's a one-off fee of $99. And because we're recording 5.3K at 8x7, that's going to allow us to take this recording here and crop it into both a vertical as well as horizontal format, supposedly without losing any of the resolution and still being able to get a 4K quality image. This is where the specs really start to come into play. You see, the GoPro's 5.3K image is only 27 point something megapixels. But the DJI 03 system can record a 4K image at 48 megapixels. I'm going to go out and fly a couple more packs. The GoPro is going to be set to 5.3K at an 8x7 aspect ratio at 60 frames per second. Of course, all settings set to auto. And the DJI 03 Air unit is going to be running 4K at 60 frames per second. And after I've done those flights, I'm going to come back in and crop in the on the DJI 03 image to replicate what you will get from the GoPro. And let's see if you can tell the difference.
And this was an absolutely horrible day to be flying. Like we had beautiful weather on the weekend when I, where I filmed those first few shots. And this here was after work and it just stopped raining and it was kind of just blur of a day. You can see it's just completely cloudy. It's not actually washed out. This is how that image would look if it was cropped in to a vertical format. So if you're using that for like TikTok or Instagram Reels. And here is the other camera again same thing as well uh, you can see a very big difference between how the cameras really show a brilliant blue sky from earlier on in the video to just how they perform when it's a blah day i mean this sort of this camera you, lots of detail as well but the, they both of them don't really do that well when you don't have a bright beautiful day and and white balance was set to auto as well. So it's not like I'm basically stuffing myself over by not giving them every opportunity. This is what the cameras are deciding is best for that image. Um, you can see stabilization working a lot more effectively for one compared to the other. So that might perhaps give There's you a phenomenal a feature that these cameras have that a lot of high-end DSLR and mirrorless cameras don't even have. And that's the ability to record 4K at 120 frames per second. I'm recording this on my Sony ZV-E10 camera and that cost me about a thousand Australian dollars. In order to be able to record 4K at 120 frames per second, that's something that's only on the top end cameras that are around $6,000. So to think that at $600 GoPro or a $350 camera and video transmitter can record 4K at 120 frames per second is nuts. So let's see exactly what that looks like and also what we can do with speeding it up and slowing it down. So if we go back to the original question, do you really need a GoPro when it comes to flying FPV? I think for micros and sub 250, that is a very clear cut answer. You shouldn't be wanting what you shouldn't be stuffing around with naked GoPros or these tiny cameras that have limited battery life or need to be wired up to a five volt regulator. Just use the DJI system that's on your quad. Now for five inch, whether it's freestyle or commercial work, I would, I would think that if you're posting on social media, right? And you were giving it a serious knock as a content creator, both for Instagram, TikTok, YouTube shorts, and uh, your horizontal work, or you're trying to get a shot for a client that they can use across all of the different social media channels, then hands down using the GoPro and putting that into the 5.3K mode. So you've got that entire giant image to be able to reframe and crop and position as you need for vertical and horizontal from the one flight, as opposed to having to run multiple flights where first flight you run in landscape and then you go horizontal. Absolutely the GoPro Hero 11. But the thing is, if you're not doing client work and I don't, and you're just posting to your own YouTube channel because you want to post your rips. The thing I would look at is what's more important, the image or perhaps a longer flight time where the 153 grams that is the GoPro 11 can actually mean a bigger battery. But the other thing is, if you don't want to be smashing GoPros because you're cracking the screen and you crashes, then having your entire VTX unit inside your quad is going to be a lot cheaper in the long run as well. And, and finally, if you're flying over sketchy situations where you're accepting the potential loss of the quad, which it's a kick in the guts when you lose a quad, don't get me wrong, to then add a $600 GoPro to the loss of a downed bird, 
that in itself is just too much to stomach. So I would rather play it safe and because I'm not going to get the footage back if the bird goes down over the water or somewhere where I can't pick it up. I'd rather just use the DJI 03 Air unit with an extra battery and hope I'm going to get back safely. If you're still watching now, hit that subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me as a way of just saying thank you for you enjoying the content. I'm Darren Allett. Until next time, don't forget to send it.